Today, on Lessons from the Haunted House, we find ourselves lost in a maze, buried deep within the bowels of the mansion. <laughs> In storytelling, mazes are often part of the architecture of a haunted house. You don't know the truth, I don't think I've ever been in this room before. <laughs> or on the grounds surrounding it, especially in gothic horror, fantasy, and psychological thrillers. Turn back, Sarah. Turn back before it's too late. This prevalent motif often mirrors the complexities of the character's inner turmoil and darkness. Dinner! And we, the audience, feeling connected, may likewise find catharsis as we grapple with the endless corridors of our own minds. What's this? Another door? One of the most captivating aspects of mazes and labyrinths is their universal appeal. These intricate structures weren't inventions confined to a single culture. They emerged independently across the world, capturing the human imagination through time. What's in there? Only what you take with you. Even today, the allure and mystique of these labyrinthine creations remains as strong as ever. While often used interchangeably in speech, mazes and labyrinths are actually distinct in their design and purpose. A maze challenges us with its intricate pathways and dead ends, designed to baffle and frustrate. For a moment there, I thought you, you were going to let it get me. For a moment, so did I. On the other hand, a labyrinth, often seen in intricate gardens, I've been in a secret garden. I found the key weeks ago. Guides us on a winding, contemplative journey from the beginning to the end in a single unbroken path, fostering introspection and mindfulness. On a side note, it occurred to me that many museums, tours, dark rides, and even IKEA could be considered labyrinths. Please, no one wander off the damn tour. And please take all the damn pictures you want. But I digress. Now, are there any damn questions? Delve into Greek mythology, and you'll encounter a ferocious beast trapped inside of a labyrinth built especially for it. The Minotaur, half man, half bull, devours anyone unlucky enough to find the center of the maze where he dwells. Often in our fables and stories, labyrinths and mazes house a mystery at their central point which is guarded by a menacing figure or creature. Think Smog from The Hobbit or Fluffy from Harry Potter. Successfully answer the riddle or defeat the dragon and the hero may find treasures, truth, or even transcendence. This idea can be traced back to the Garden of Eden story where the Tree of Life was said to be in the exact center of the garden. And at the same time, the Tree of Knowledge of Good and Evil was also said to be in the center of the garden. In some traditions, the Tree of Knowledge of Good and Evil is depicted as growing over and concealing the Tree of Life. At the center of our souls, within the labyrinth of our own heart and mind is our own Tree of Life an ever-flowing source of light, peace, and truth. Our inner self, a connection with God and the universe. But it may be concealed, obscured from view, and even blocked by our own demons. In the book, The Tools by Phil Stutz and Barry Michaels, we find this intriguing quote. As we grow into adults, we turn away from this inner self. All our attention and activity becomes focused on the outside world. We start to look there for approval, by the time we are adolescents, we crave the acceptance of our peers as if it were the Holy Grail. That creates a new problem. We have to hide anything about ourselves that others might not like. Amazingly, the hiding place becomes our own inner self. We use it as a garbage bag, dumping anything that is unacceptable about ourselves into it. The inner self is still there, but now it's buried under our worst qualities. In the process, we've turned something that was beautiful, the inner self, into something we despise, the shadow. It may seem like the worst part of us, but really it's the doorway to the inner self. End of quote. In a spiritual sense, our fears, regrets, and desires construct labyrinthine corridors with riddles to solve, monsters to conquer, and gatekeepers to challenge us. Yet who has created this maze? We have. We've buried our true selves, 
our dreams and our passions in an attempt to conform to societal expectations. Instead of embracing joy, we tread through life disconnected from our inner wellspring. The maze with its cancer-like expansion has confined us, chaining our perception of the infinite and muting the breathings of our spirit. The endless mansion, the elaborate construction we've built in our minds, keeps us busy and diverted, preventing us from facing the inner well and the cap that now obstructs it. But if we are the ones that have constructed it, that also gives us power to dismantle it. You have no power over me. It has been built over time and will take time to break down. But we have the keys to the hidden rooms and the locked gates. We may not like what we find there. But healing can come when the shadow is no longer neglected, feared, and abused. When the monster goes to sleep or turns back into a beautiful maiden, then we can open the treasure, the source of life giving light and love at the center of our souls, and live. Thank you for joining me in the haunted house.